Like I'm going to lose a hundred million dollars. I'm going to lose half of my friends. It's all gone. I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to curl up. I'm going to keep moving forward and I'm going to double down on my kids. Because I retired the first time in 2005. And then I came back in 2009. <clears throat> you know, that void, so to speak, was filled by Livestrong. So I, I, I just dove headfirst into Livestrong and, um, and then just having fun with life. And so it didn't, I still came back, which I guess you could argue that there was something, there was some itch there that needed to be scratched. Mm. Um, and then when I retired again in 2011, it, the shit hit the fans so hard that honestly it filled the void. Like it was, a, it was a terrible time and it was ugly and expensive and, and embarrassing but it was so busy and competitive and intense and stressful that it filled the void. Like it was, I can't imagine what it would have been like if I just, just retired again. That's interesting. Yeah. So I was, I was having to, you know, fight all these lawsuits, figure out who the fuck my friends were, um, get kicked out of, uh, of live strong. So that was gone. Um, but just battle. I mean, I was just battling. And so that went for, six years well tell me this what was it like when in, in your situation was obviously a little bit different or a lot different how hard was it for you to show up as dad when you were dealing with all that like how 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 did you how no, did you i mean that that was easy because that's i i decided that all right okay i see what's happening here this is this is going to be a colossal meltdown like i'm going to lose a hundred million dollars i'm going to lose half of my friends I'm going to lose the organization that I spent 15 years building and raising half a billion dollars to help 3 million other people. It's all gone. And so here, here's what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to curl up. I'm not going to, you know, be a little baby about it. I'm going to keep moving forward and I'm going to double down on my kids. I'm going to double down on my health and wellness. I'm going to double down on those half, of my friends that didn't haul ass. Mm. And that was my move. It's just to like, no, just boom, lean straight. If I hugged my kids, you know, the day before it just shit hit the fan, if it was on a scale of one to 10, if it was a seven, I'm a, tomorrow I'm gonna hug them a 14. Mm. Like just double everything on them. And so, and I didn't, you know, I, I was eyes wide open, man. If, if it was going to a sporting event or a practice or a performance or whatever, or taking them to school, I didn't, I didn't flinch. I didn't, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. um, and to Austin's credit, man, they were great. Like there, there was very little, um, so not, not pushback, but there was very little, uh, I think this city, the schools, the teachers, the, their peers, the counselors, everybody was, was, was really supportive of my kids. Mm -hmm. And what would, what would you want your kids to take away from your experience? You know, what's the, like the, what you went through, what you experienced, right? Whether it was your own doing or not, like what, like what is the life lesson or are there life lessons packed in there for them? I mean, there's a lot of life lessons. I mean, I, I think the, this idea around, I mean, look, I mean, the, 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 the didn't go down the way it went down because I, I, I doped, right? It went down because I was ruthless and vile and mean and, and, and a bully. And, you know, that just comes down to honesty and integrity. And that's all the shit. Like if you look at your kids, if you saw your kid out, if you could just boil it down and he was acting like Lance Armstrong of 2004, if he was doing that on the playground, you'd lose your mind. Mm. You'd be like, what? Get your ass over here. What mm -hmm. are you? But I didn't have anybody to come over at the playground back then and, and tap me on the shoulder. I just was doing it on my own, being an idiot. And so, you know, that that idea around honesty, integrity, fairness, um, and and I'm not even talking about doping a sport because this is I'm, I'm, when I say fairness, I'm not like being like let's all be fair in the race. Sure. No fairness towards other people um, because there was no fair in bike race. You know, I don't care what anybody says. There was no such thing as fair. Mm -hmm. It was totally unfair, and it was the wild wild west. And so we just were trying to manage that. Um, I mean, I think people get that. I think people are like, okay, I got that. But you were really unfair to a lot of people, which is true. And so there's that. But then there's also just this lesson of like, the, my kids are, they're, they're going to live a blessed life, but they're going to have times where 
you know, you might fail a class, you might lose a job, you might uh, get divorced, you might um, uh, get dumped or whatever, you know. And so how do you respond and react and recover from that, which is like, if I look at my jam, like that's the thing I'm the most proud of, if I can be proud of myself. I mean, it's just the fact that I'm sitting here, what's it been, uh, eight years later, and you know, if you just go through the phases of he goes in hiding, he he lays low, he doubles down on his kids and his health. Um, he slowly starts to reemerge building content. Now, I mean, if you look at the, who'd have thought, nobody would have thought that. Fuck no. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> and then, by the way, <laughs> there was no plan. So the shit hits the fan, you know, whatever, October, September, October of 2012. It wasn't like there was a summit January of 13. Like, okay, here's the steps, dude. <laughs> We made this shit up as we went along. I just told you. Yeah. My manager bugging me to do a show because I've got interesting friends. Mm-hmm. Me going, no. And then going, okay, fuck it, let's do it. And then falling back in love with the bike and then creating the second show. That audience blows up. The deal flow starts. The fun starts. Like, we just made it up. Dude, it's like, it's a classic just going back. Like, <laughs> yeah. when, when all, it's good, go back inward. And what is... What is inside you? Well, inside you is getting on the bike. Inside you is your family and your friends that are there. Yep. And it's it's just starting there to the shit we know. Yeah. And keeping it true to as we I mean, even on the money on the, the advertising side, just keeping it completely for like I just can't first of all, I don't ever work I don't work for anybody. I mean, I guess I do in the sense that I work for my LPs, but I don't um they feel more like partners. Yeah. Than, than my employer. Um, but it's just keeping it authentic, keeping it core. And if there's ever a time where you got to, you got to, I mean, because I did it, man. I, I, I had so many deals for so many, so long, so many endorsements. You're like, am I really going to stand up and say this for a bunch of zeros at the end of the number? Like, fuck that. I ain't never going back to that. Mm-hmm. No way. 